So, what other risks if you're going to retire in the Philippines? I've, I've jotted a few down and I'll go through them. First one is health. Health is probably one of the biggest killers, obviously, <laughs> um, for retirees. But if they don't have enough budget for all, um, medical emergencies, it can eat through your savings, it can eat through, you could be forced to sell your house, all sorts of catastrophes can be caused due to bad health. Um, you've also got the fact that if you um, get ill from something local beyond their heart attack, for example, dengue outbreaks happen from time to time and the people that are most likely to become seriously ill or die are the oldest and youngest people, which for retirement age you're in a high risk bracket so from that aspect you've also got to be aware of it um dengue is pretty bad i had dengue myself so i know that it's uh it's effects um but even England, nearly a few years back had 114 people die in one year from dengue so healthcare is a very important one and um, that's why i'm always pushing get medical insurance um or at least think, think sensibly about it uh, because if you don't then your whole life can go from being fantastic to your worst nightmare in one easy move because they'll put you in a hospital and they put you on a drip and all this sort of stuff and it's, they're running the bill up and they won't let you leave the hospital till you paid your bill and then you're caught in this loop because now you get to a point where you can't pay the bill because you're in the hospital but if they let you leave you can actually use your um, pension or whatever at the end of the month but they catch you in a loop and people and there's people that get stuck in hospitals um, so be aware of that because the the hospital system's a cash cow it's not there for you it's there for making money that's it Treat it as any other business. It's like going into a hotel. You're checking in and they just want to drain your cash. Um, not enough budget. A very common one. Um, because I know some people go, oh, well, you know, because I've discussed this before. The absolute minimum is probably about 500, maybe a little bit low, maybe a bit. It just depends how you live. But that's an absolute. That doesn't take into account that you had a motorcycle accident last month and it's cost you 20000 It doesn't take into account you've had to buy a motorcycle. It doesn't take into account the kids are getting an education. For a basic person, you know, even a couple, it's quite tight. But if you were seriously looking at starting a family or something, you're going to struggle on it. And I don't know, people go, oh, I don't struggle. But a lot of people don't fill in the blanks. They don't fill in the fact that last month they had to pay for the the school fees and all that. They just give you a monthly budget. They forget all the excess costs that are sort of hidden away that they had to find money for. Um, so I'm not, I'm not getting into that debate. But that's why even that rolls back into the healthcare because you haven't got enough budget. One of the things you're going to cut off is your medical insurance. Um, but it affects everything because you, your um, diet to where you live, what you're doing is all affected by budget. So it has an adverse effect if you haven't got enough budget. Um, a bad partner. One of the next worst things on my list, because they're sort of in order actually, um, a bad partner can make your life an absolute living hell. I've seen people being thrown out of their own houses because obviously it's in the partner's name and then they've turned around and just ditched the foreign husband. Um, that has happened more than once, probably about five times in about seven years I've, I've known of this happening. The same with renovating other people's houses is another one uh, because you move into your partner's house, you renovate it and then they get rid of you. Seen that happen. Um, the same with some people have even experienced being poisoned by their partner trying to get some sort of um, insurance payout that didn't even exist. There's a lot of things a bad partner can do. Some that could be quite violent as well. I, I know a couple of guys that have had some seriously bad experiences. One, his wife actually ran him over with a car. Um, so bad partners can have a very adverse effect. Isolation. Very serious thing, and I always say, you know, you need to keep in touch with some expats, even if you dislike most of them, you know, because the reality is you need somebody that is going to cover your back. Even if you meet once a month or just talk on the internet now and again, if you've got a contact for emergencies, 
but also for just communication because a lot of the conversations can run dry very quickly in the Philippines. Local population um, generally don't have a broad interest of the world. It's normally about the town they're in, sports, and when I say sports, it's like maybe basketball, and maybe rugby, uh, rugby that would be nice, um, maybe boxing, but not a lot above that. It just The conversations are very localized, which is why I always recommend trying to get at least a couple of good friends. Pride also has a major part. Because there's many expats that fall on hard times and refuse to accept that they need to go home. Um, now, the way I look at it is that if you went home and recovered whatever you needed to do because you have access to healthcare and stuff and then come back, there's no phase lost. There's no... Life is about doing what you want to do. You know, this whole thing where people channel these false things as if somebody's going to laugh at you because you didn't make it the first time around. Who cares, mate? I really, this is what I'm saying to you. What you do in your life, you're doing a lot more than most of these people will do anyway. So you're already ahead of the game. Don't worry what other people think. You do what you need to do. So don't get caught out in this thing where people have this false pride about, you know, um, having to do something. I know some people have had to sell their houses um, go back to the the US, whatever, three to five years, then come back again because they had a heart attack and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with it. Taking a slap in the face and just saying, well, you're right, Matt, I should have medical insurance, but at the same time, I'm living with it, I'm moving on. But a lot of time, they're just like, they don't want to tell anybody. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just part of life. Everyone makes mistakes. Those that normally laugh loudest at others are the ones that will never tell you what they actually get up to because they often have some very um, bad experiences but they like to reflect their um, mockery on others because they don't like themselves being analyzed so the way I just say just brush it off and move on upsetting the wrong person this has some very adverse effects in the Philippines. There was a hotel where a guy was trying to fix his pajero outside and there was a fairly elderly American gentleman, because it was quite late at night, went and sort of shouted at the guy, at which point the guy with his car was already annoyed that his car wasn't working properly and he's trying to get it running, uh, pulled a pistol and was going to shoot the American. That is when you bump into the wrong people. You'll hear of things like uh, Cadillac Cafe. Well, I can't confirm the reports, but I did hear it from several different people that weren't associated that he'd thrown out, the owner of that had thrown out the mayor's son into the street. I'm not sure what the whole incident was, but the guy left the country very shortly after. Those sort of things do happen. You've got to be aware that the average Filipino that you bump into every day is fine. But some of these people have too much power at the top. The too much power, they've got the police protection because they pay their bills, etc. They do what they want. Um, I think some of this is about to change on at the end of this month. But at the end of the day, you just have to be aware of this. These people are very borderline mental at the best of time but you know they're quite happy to kill people just for the sake of it you just have to be aware that these people exist around you and just not get involved with them uh risky businesses this is another one this is one that was a big effect on 2008 i think it was the legacy scandal many expats invested in this investment Guarantee money in, you know, return on investment, 100% return in a year and all this sort of stuff. And then that failed. And then it went on to motorbikes. We're investing in these motorbikes. You're guaranteed a return on this. And then that failed. And then there's something, there's always these ideas. They're not new in the Philippines. It's just that there seems to be a lack of regulations to stop people um, creating them. Because um, I know of some people that have tried to prosecute some of these key players. I know some people have, but there's been developments on land that wasn't really theirs and other sorts 
But because they're buying off the legal system, they're buying off the local government, etc., they often can be left alone. My best advice, don't invest in them. Unless you're 100% sure on an investment, I wouldn't touch it. Philippines is always risky. Um, but I find a lot of, is even more risky because some of these people are already on their third, fourth, fifth dodgy venture um, and already know who can protect them legally. Because a lot of the problems in the Philippines, you have to confront them with money um, by getting your, the legal team and all this sort of stuff. And because these guys have got everybody else's money, they're already ahead of the game. So don't get involved with it. If you're there, retire. You don't need all this excess crap going on around you. Remove yourself from it. Just say, I'm here, I'm retired. I'm not, I don't want to know. And, you know, relax, enjoy life. Get a nice place to live. Meet a nice woman. Enjoy life. And if you're a female, by the way, get yourself a nice guy. Nothing wrong with that. I know uh, several people that are... Uh, so, several Filipino guys that are married to um, foreign nationals. One of them's a uh, German national. I've never actually met his wife, but we have discussed about life because <laughs> he met her in the Middle East while he was out there in the Middle East. But the 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 thing with it is retirement is about enjoying life. You want to withdraw anything that actually brings a risk to you. Anything that is a potential risk, a hazard, got a downside, try and remove them, evaluate them, assess them, so that you can just enjoy life. You don't want these headaches. Um, I hope you found this interesting, because I, I thought it was one of those things I haven't covered, but these are the key elements I would be looking for in the Philippines to avoid. Um, Finding somewhere to live and all that, it's the same for anybody. It's not, it's not that big a headache. But these are the ones I would be worried about if I was retiring in the Philippines. Thanks for watching.